I'm impatient for it to start. There it goes. We're live. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Beastly Thoughts episode 83? Yes. 83. 83. We're getting up there, guys. This is like, you know, we, we qualify for AARP. We get, like, early bird specials. We get it all, man. We're, we're almost we're ready for it up over here. 83. Yeah. All right. So, real quick, we had a discussion before the show started. What are we going to talk about? We're we going to do the uh, what you've been playing. But I said, hey, hasn't everybody just been playing Destiny? And everybody said, yes. So, we're just going to talk about Destiny. <laughs> As so, always. if you're not into Destiny, which who isn't really? Why? Why wouldn't you be? Right now is like uh, the game is just stunning right now. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've been playing Destiny. Lately. Absolutely. I mean, so I want to talk about the Taken King, and I also want to talk about the King's Fall raid. Uh, those are the two things that are just primary, like in my world right now. Are you guys okay with that? Starting to show off with absolutely, that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So everybody's been playing the new Taken King. Uh, expansion. I, I don't even want to call it DLC because it feels much bigger than that. $40. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Hell yes. <laughs> Hell yes. Let me just say that. I, I have to reiterate that over and over again. When I first started playing it, I didn't think I would get as much play out of it as I've gotten so far and I'm not even done yet. Yeah. I've already gotten over $40 worth of gameplay out of it. I've yeah. been playing this game since the DLC dropped. Uh, this is the most fun I've ever had with Destiny. And I've had a lot of fun with it in the past, but right now it's it's definitely worth 40 bucks. They have changed this game in very big fundamental ways, and I think one of the biggest is the story. Uh, I gotta I gotta say Nathan Fillion playing Cade Six knocked oh, it. Oh, he's out of the, the man. Love he's the it. Man. Knocked it. He killed it. Right. He's I the mean, man. It, he brings like a Han Solo like charm and wit to that character. It's absolutely captivating. Like I love the story of the Taken King. I thought Eris Morn was great. I loved Zavala. Like the play between Zavala and Eris Morn, and then Cade Six and Eris Morn was great. Uh, I, I I was I was captivated by the story, and I, that shocks me. That shocks me because that is without a doubt Destiny Year One's weakest point. Yeah. Well, b- mm-hmm. before this expansion, these vanguards were just static images, static characters that had no heart, no character. You didn't care about their plight, their situation at all. This DLC made you see them as individuals, and and it gave them personalities. Cade has got to be my favorite of all of them, okay? The guy's funny, he's witty, he doesn't care, and and now I really wanted to be a part of the Hunters uh, group because of the way he interacts, the way he brings his energy and, 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 and laughter. Basically, I laughed at every scene he was in when he was talking, whether or not I was on a mission he was talking to me or watching a cut scene and watching what he was doing. I love it. i got to say one thing, though. A lot of people were down on uh, Nolan North. I love Nolan North as the new Ghost. Um, I think he did an excellent job. I think it it I agree with you. Absolutely. Uh, I was down on it because hearing the old lines with Nolan North's new voice, I'd heard him so many times with Peter Dinklage's voice, it, it felt weird. It felt, it shocked me. You know, not it was very weird. literally shocked me, but it was every time I heard it, it just felt different, different. and weird. You know, this ain't uh, right. Hearing the new lines in the new DLC, it felt much better. He brought more personality to the role than Peter Dinklage did. At least it felt more more natural. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still a little weird with kind of like the high pitch, kind of like he's almost like. Mm, He's almost too carefree. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? He's a but, little fast talking, yeah. Uh, but I like it. I, I I came around when Nolan North with the new content. Still with the old content, Peter Dinklage was kind of the original, and I was okay with it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, to me, it all sounds really good. I'm loving the game. Yeah. What uh, do you think about the story, Robbie? I got to say, I absolutely love the story. I thought, first of all, like the cutscenes were amazing. I thought that first opening mission on Mars, too, when you're going in there and you see the Cabal all being taken over by the Taken. Taken? Oh, yeah. It felt like some different kind of tone for Destiny. Like, it was so dark and atmospheric. I was like, this is so cool. I love this experience. And as I played the story, it just feels like, yeah, a lot of these people like Kate Six and Eris and Zavala, they all have a purpose in this world, and they all feel like more than just these vendors we've gotten to know because they've just, like Bungie said, they were going to wrap up the story for the Taken King, and they really have done that. They've created really important characters that you kind of care about and that matter in this story, and I think it's awesome. I really enjoyed the missions. They were great, and especially exploring the Dreadnought was amazing. Yeah. The, I, okay, so the story lasts, what, six hours, hours? eight hours? But I'd say, the, yeah, less than that. You think? I think it was about three hours. Then, like okay. the main story stuff. Yeah. So then, but then you 
you don't really stop. You don't with the stop. story. No. Like the main story is done, right? You're, you're kind of done with your cutscenes, but much more is presented to you in the form of quests, mm-hmm. and you start working on quest lines, talking to characters, getting more dialogue, getting more information about the Taken, going on new missions, you know, missions that are specific to quests. I gotta say, like the end game of Destiny feels much more robust than it ever has before. Yeah, well, I, I think that they've added a lot more focus to the story than it's ever had before. Mm-hmm. Throughout this DLC, it's it's been a pivotal direction that you've been going the whole time. I actually really enjoyed Oryx. I enjoyed every scene he was in. I was focused on taking him out, and then after you finally take him out, the story continues in other directions by people who are coming to take his throne. It, it just they added so much to it. I think that this DLC or expansion, as we want to call it now, is more story than we've had in all. Destiny content up until now. Yeah, it, yes. feel, it feels really refreshing. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It takes a lot to pull me away from my favorite game, but this game has done it, and uh, yeah. I'm really, yeah. really happy with what we, what we got so far. So speaking of people who are trying to take over Oryx's throne, we got to see the Dark Blade new uh, strike. We got to see all the new strikes. What do you guys think of the new strikes? New strike bosses. Oh, Very man. Good. Yeah, man. Uh the, these these new strike bosses, you can't really cheese them the way you could before. At least well, I will see about that. I'm sure you're yeah. gonna find a way. I'm sure. I'm sure it's you a little will. Earlier, early for that decision to be made. <laughs> it was really difficult for me to do it. I actually ran through some of the new strikes yesterday. I had my cousin from Ohio playing with me and my wife, and uh, we ran through two of them, two of the new ones. It was very difficult. Extremely fun. Very rewarding. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just so much to do now. Uh, pre-show, Robbie and I were talking um, about what Destiny is becoming, and I think we are watching the crescendo of something that's really going to be a a landmark in gaming history. I think this is going to be something that's going to change what first-person shooters are in the future, what RPGs are in the future, the way they're adding this amazing content, changing the dynamic of the way the game is played throughout the year. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they continue to do this, this is going to it might be one of the greatest games of all time, especially the way they're just changing it and, and they're leveling things out that seem out of tune, making it right, listening to yeah. the gamers, fixing a lot of stuff. It's it's really a great game. I'm really having a lot of fun with it. Robbie, what do you think of the new strikes? What, what's your favorite strike from the uh, Taken King so far? I think all the strikes are really great. I enjoyed the Shield, Shield Brothers one as well. I like how there's yeah. two different bosses to fight simultaneously. Yeah. They both have different move sets. I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. I love the one down in the pit where you're fighting that giant guy with the axe. Dark I can't Blade. What it's called. Yeah. yeah, the Dark Blade strike. Uh, the Echo Chamber, the PlayStation exclusive one, was also very good fighting that kind of Vex. It was very yeah. good. Yeah. They're all really great, and they all have like slightly different mechanics from each other. I like that variety. It's very good. Mm-hmm. I think overall, and... I'm amazed, too, that there's so many quests in this game. Like, you keep doing quest after quest after quest. And these quests unlock new missions, too, in the story. Like, there are so many story missions to unlock. And, like, this is more content than the original Destiny. I... I'm just blown away by how much Bungie has listened to the community, how much this game has evolved over the past year. I have never seen a game evolve this much and change. Neither have I. Yeah. Massive, oh, well, massive change. One of the things I like about the strikes, I'm trying to stick it to, trying to section this off a little bit so we can talk about like a little bit at a time, but strikes, you know, I like how they've kind of integrated the strikes into the story much better than they did with Vanilla Destiny. Uh, like that Dark Blade strike is you find out that this guy was actually, you know, you've already beat Oryx, right? You're This guy, or, well, no, I think Dark Blade was imprisoned because he went for Oryx's throne and, like, this is his fate now, right? He's, like, in this, like, little prison down there. You know, there's so much... There's so much... It's, it just feels richer, right? Yeah. And the mechanics. What's the What's the boss? It's like a... Uh, you go into a round room. You think you're just going to be DPS in another one of those big Hydra-looking things. But, and the thing comes right out, and it becomes this mechanic where you got to move the ball back and forth between the two slots. I got chamber. Yeah, that's the chamber. chamber. <clears throat> yeah, that one's great. That's crazy too, man. I had a lot of fun with that that strike. Um, have you guys played any of the old strikes that have kind of got redone with the Taken? Yes, yeah. I've played Dust Palace. I've played uh, Undying Mind. It's very cool. Yeah. That's another thing too. The Taken. They're such cool new enemies because they're the same races, but they it's almost like they've been corrupted. Like they've right. been taken by this infection almost, and it's they're different. They have like these different move sets. Mass Effect. Right. 
Well, the Some Dust Palace, things. I think you, you nailed it because every time you go into the Dust Palace, it's a little bit different. Not every time, but there's like a couple of different versions of the Dust Palace strike right now. Sometimes yeah. you go in and it's filled with Taken. Sometimes you go in and it's filled with Hydras. You know, you don't know exactly what you're going to get every time you go see the, the that mission. Uh, same goes that. with Undying Mind. Sometimes you get kind of that older version. Sometimes it's filled with Taken. Like, it's it's just cool now, you know? Like, it's unexpected. And you're right, Robbie. I, I got to say I love the new enemies. Uh, they're different. They're challenging. They they feel unlike any other enemy. How you know, annoying are those black enemies. balls of death, too? How oh, annoying God. are those black balls of the smoke? The that is so distracting. Like, my God. <laughs> That's the worst. Oh, are you talking about the knights when they blind you? Yeah, they, yeah, they throw a giant black ball of smoke at you. That is brutal. Like, hey, God. Robbie, I take offense to that. Some people like giant black balls. But getting back to Destiny... <laughs> That is, it, it can be pretty frustrating. I don't. False. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm really enjoying uh, a lot of this stuff. Pretty much everything I've seen in The Taken King has brought me into this world. Hopefully I stay in it for a long time. Yeah. What but do you I guys wanna, think about the new weapons? I was going to ask oh, sorry, you. Go ahead, Robbie. I mean, go ahead, Beastly. The, oh, the, the new super moves for the new subclasses. Yes. God. Man. They're like super fun, aren't they? Oh my goodness! So what fun. class are you playing? Uh, well, I have a, a level twenty-eight uh, hunter and a level forty um, warlock. Mm -hmm. And so the warlock is what I've been primarily using. Of course, I did level up my new character, and I'm going to continue with that hunter. But now with this guardian, um, this new ability, my subclass is called Storm. Um, Storm caller. Storm caller. Storm caller. That. Mm. I don't want to call it OP because in, in Vanilla Destiny, or at least with the DLC, the Hunter had the Blade Dancer, all right? And that was kind of, compared to the other super moves, it was a little overpowered because everybody else had to kind of aim. If you're a Blade Dancer, you were basically ballet dancing through enemies and killing them with ease. So I kind of I kind of, kind of feel like the Warlock has something kind of similar with this new super ability. You kind of pull out this electricity and zap everybody like in Star Wars and you don't really have to aim at anybody. And to me, it's a very liberating feeling to have my, my Warlock have power like that. I think all these new supers are very, very awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. really, really awesome. That new hammer, I, I've never used it because I'm not that class. Yeah, they, that's the only one I've used personally. But and whenever when I join a game and people are playing, and they're, they're, you know, we're still in the first week, right? Everybody is saying, I'm so glad I picked this class. I'm so happy this this super is so fun, you know. Like it doesn't matter if they're playing hunter, it doesn't matter if they're playing uh, warlock, or it doesn't matter if they're playing titan. Everybody's having a blast with these new supers. I'm playing the uh, titan, and the new the new the new subclass is phenomenal. It's just so much fun, and there's so much customization you can do with it. You know, the if you're throwing the hammer down, uh, you get like a little charge move that you can use. You can throw the hammer down on the ground, stand in the sun spot, and have more powerful hammers. You know, it's like. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool stuff. Robbie, what, what class are you playing? <clears throat> Titan Master Race. Okay. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've pretty much been playing the Titan for the most part, and uh, I love it. But I have been playing on all three characters, mostly Titan, because that's the only one I have up to uh, 294 light. So. Yeah, right. uh, the only thing I'm worried about is will these super, mo will these super moves unbalance PvP? Uh, especially with you don't what, think so? what do you mean unbalanced PvP like it was balanced before? <laughs> I mean it seems like it's going to make it even even bigger of a gap, especially when you you come out into a room and you got five enemies and you shoot electricity, you hit them all five at the same time. I'm I'm wondering yeah. how they're going to balance that out because if it works the same way it does in PvE, it's going to be a major issue. People are really really going to hate that. We'll Just see. Saying. We'll see. PvP, I think. Yeah. You know, I think everybody right now is really focused on PvE. I think we won't get to the PvP until maybe next week or the week after. Yeah. Uh, because it's just, I, I really feel like the whole community just went like, okay, let's level up, let's get into this new raid, right? Because the raid came out three days after the expansion, which didn't give us much time. Uh, and I got to say, the raid is stupendous. What do you guys think of the Dreadnought, by the way? I think it's awesome. Like, it, it, there's so much to explore. There's so much to do in there. It feels much more fleshed out than any of the other patrol areas. Lots of secrets, too. There's lots of those calcified fragments, lots of chests you have to figure out how to get runes for and yeah. stuff. 
Very cool. Amazing. Like, it looks so cool. I love the design of that shit, too. Like, oh, my God, it looks awesome. I love yeah. that. I, I like how they introduce it to you, too. It's like you kind of go there... Uh, you run like you know, like your first mission. Then you go back and you plant the patrol beacons. You know, like that stuff was like awesome. that. You, you keep going back with like a purpose, and then you go to the Shield Brothers strike and kind of explore how you know the the Cabal have like entered. And there's like there's right where you spawn in. There's actually one of those uh, events where the Cabal and the uh, and the Hive actually like fight each other. Yeah, they're at war. Yeah. Yeah. Like they go, they go to war right there, and that's actually a really effective way to rank up if you <laughs> if you run into one of those. Because man, ranking up in this game is completely different now. Like it's, yeah, like all, like nothing from the old stuff is still valid, right? It's like you you rank up, you get up to forty really quick. You know that's just experience. But then leveling up your gear, it's all about finding engrams, finding blues, finding purples, and Sometimes you find a blue that's better than the legendary that you have. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's Many all times. about just getting that light level is maxed up. And then if you have a legendary that you you really like, like it's got really good perks. Say I have a chest armor, right, that has really good perks for a Sunbreaker Titan because it gives me extra armor when I have the Sunbreaker class equipped. But it came to me at like 243 light, and I got a blue piece of armor that was like 280. So I was like, okay, what do I do here? Do I infuse my 280 blue into my legendary, lose some of that light, or do I stick at 280, run some strikes with the heroic strike playlist to try and get even more gear? So you have these real decisions while you're leveling up your gear that, frankly, I think is pretty interesting. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. I I agree. What exotics have you guys gotten so far? What do we have? What's that? What uh, exotic weapons have you collected and armor? Uh, I got the new Soros Black. Oh, you too. It's nice. Good. I got the, it's good. It's it feels like the Soros. Uh, it's got the new firing mode spitting up, so you can select either slow fire or fast fire. Uh, and basically, I I do find that I use that. I basically select slow fire for long range engagements and fast fire for close range. You know, like I can just. Yeah. I wish. I do wish there was a way to switch that without going into the menu. That's true. Right. Yeah. I'm glad there's a fast fire on the Soros because honestly, that gun sometimes it fires too slow. Like it gets kind of boring using it. To be honest, that's just how I personally it, feel. To it's me, it always felt like an auto fire scout rifle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I got a few uh, exotics. I got mm-hmm. two year two uh, fourth horsemen's, which I don't use. Oh, no, you're missing out. <laughs> I've, I've never, I've never used them. I've oh, never so really good. been a shotgun guy. Maybe I'll give it a try. Uh-huh. But I did get. My favorite gun that I've ever had in Destiny ever. It's called the Kalo Supercell. Uh, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's it's incredible. The it's gun a is primary that does arc damage, and it chains uh, electric en- yeah. energy between the enemies you're firing at. It's, and it's like an AK too. It's the yeah. baddest gun I've ever seen in the game. Yeah, it's it very is. cool. I haven't gotten that yet. I've only seen uh, I've seen pictures of it and I've heard about it. And you're enjoying it? Like it's fun to you? Yeah, it, it, it mows down enemies like it's nothing. It doesn't matter who, what they are. It's just so fast. As soon as you look at an enemy, they lay down for you. Yeah, that thing's going to be a go-to for Arkburn Nightfalls, too. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You're definitely going to want that thing. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with it. I got some uh, exotic gear, uh, and pretty much it's year two of the stuff that I had previously. Mm-hmm. But as far as weapons go, uh, the Supercell is, is my go-to at this point. Yeah. I'm going to try out the Fourth Horseman year two. I've had five or six year one, never used them. Uh, because uh, It's a great gun. It's I fantastic. Really like it. uh, especially, like, you know, like those captains that kind of sneak up on you and all of a sudden they're, like, pounding you. Yeah. Just unload. It's, thing, it's like boom, 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 boom. Yeah, four shots. Dead. Anything that was in front of you is just dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, awesome. maybe I'll give it a try. Wow, okay. It's really fun. Sure. Uh, I also got the Telesto, the new fusion rifle. I got that too. That really thing fun. is boss. Yes. It is unbelievable amount of damage it does. Like I, I used it in the raid, all the way through the raid, and I was like, this thing is carrying my ass through the raid because it just it takes down majors and ultra and ultras in no time. This thing is cool too because it fires the initial pulse rifle blast, but then the the bullets, for lack of a better word, stick to your enemy and then blow up again. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> so wow. 
it, it, it really does a lot of damage, and the range on it is way better than you'd expect it to be. It's very good range. I yeah. love the Telesto, and the way it looks is so cool. It's yeah. got like that little purple kind of inside you can see, and yeah. it sounds super cool when you fire it, too. I love it. Yeah, the only complaint I have about it is the sound of it. It's not loud enough. Sometimes when you're in like a loud situation, like a big firefight, you can't hear it. But it does have that light bar that shows you its charge-up time, which is yeah. nice. Uh, so you know exactly when it's going to fire based on that light bar charging up. Briar, I have to you know I get a rifle? Oh. Uh, that's pretty cool. I haven't played a whole lot with that, and it's one of the coolest perks is that when you shoot one enemy, it it has a chance to blind the surrounding enemies. That's the hereafter oh. sniper, right? Hereafter, that's correct. Um, oh, that one so bad. But oh. I, I haven't I haven't used it enough to really talk about it too much. I got the uh, immolation fists, I think, for the Titan. That's yeah. nice. It's kind of like one of those ones that just unlocks another uh, another perk in your perk tree for your subclass. I think that's about it. I got the Hawk Moon again, Hawk Moon Year 2, which is... Oh, cool. my God. Oh, man. Year two. Oh. Wow. Um, it's the same, though. It, like It's identical. It doesn't feel any different. Uh, last word, I got the last word Year 2. Uh, I got the... Oh, I got the Stag Helmet for the Warlock. I still want that one. I have not gotten it yet. It looks... <laughs> Really cool. <laughs> it's awesome. I've seen tons of people using it in Crucible too. Like, I think it's awesome. I got the new uh, astronaut helmet for the Titan. The Psychonaut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that looks crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's got the weirdest perks too. It gives you tracking for a rocket launcher. Like, so if you have a like a grenade and horseshoe tracking launcher, if you put this helmet on, it makes it track as well. What? Kind yeah. of a niche perk, to be honest, but it a could very be good. niche. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else did I get? Oh, I got the new Imperium helmet. I think it's called something like that, but basically it's a more sleek helmet for the Titan, and you can see, like, gears kind of underneath the skin of it. That one's cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll, tight, uh, I'll be honest with you. It's pretty easy to get exotics right now. <laughs> it really is. I've been getting a lot of stuff. I wonder, yeah. I wonder how long that's going to last, Briar. Mm. You know? Uh, if if history is anything to tell by, Bungie will have that patch in no time. I'm sure. So everyone... What what we're talking about here is that you can basically go into a mission that has an ultra in it, uh, and you Zerd now has this uh, new thing called Three of Coins, which gives you a a chance to find an exotic when you kill an ultra. But you don't like. I think they intended it so that you have to play through a strike to use it. But if you use it in a mission uh, where you know, yeah, it'll still work. And uh, what you do is you just go into this mission, you kill the Ultra with your three of your coins equipped, die, and rinse and repeat until you get an exotic. And I've been getting an exotic probably one out of five times I kill an Ultra. That's about I've yeah, been that's using them a lot, too. Yeah, yeah. They've, they're pretty good. I'd say yeah. I really like them a lot. But I stopped using them. I, was, I did it because I needed, I needed to get as high light level as I could to get into the raid on Friday. Um, and if you... Get a exotic; those come at 290 light level, mm-hmm. right? The, if you buy them, they're 280. But if you get a drop, it's 290. So even if you're not going to use it, you can use it to infuse other gear that you might need to have boosted up a little bit. So that's why I was doing it. I'm going to stop doing it now, I think, because I want to. I want nightfalls to have some meaning for me. I want some. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to save the joy a little bit longer. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean it, it's a pretty pretty severe way to get <laughs> loot in that game. No Jade Rabbit yet? No Jade Rabbit. I'm I'm looking forward to getting that. I'm gonna get that before you, Briar. You heard right. it here. Yeah, Robbie yeah. told me about you, you guys' little <laughs> wager first. So let me know who we gets it. I was no, I was trolling <laughs> in the chat about getting it first. That's all. That's what that's what Robbie does. He comes to the Planet Destiny chat when I'm streaming, and he trolls me for two hours. Essentially, <laughs> what's going on. And, uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to ban him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. Um, you guys want to talk about the raid a little bit? I'd sure. like to hear about it because I was un- un- unable to see any of it. And from what I heard from you pre-show, it's really awesome. So please enlighten me, and especially for the viewers who might not have seen it as well. So the raid begins uh, at the Court of Oryx. 
we started. We did a live stream. I'm sure a lot of the viewers have watched the live stream that we did on Friday night. We tried to do a world's first. We got really stuck on the final boss, though, and we ended up not even coming close to world's first. But it was a really fun raid. So it feels... I don't want to spoil anything, right? Because if people want to go into this raid fresh, I don't want to be the one who ruins that for you. That's, yeah. But I'll say this. It feels b much bigger than the Vault of Glass. Ooh. Um, there's much more variety to the activities than any raid that we've seen so far. It starts at the Court of Oryx, which is it's significant because, uh, like Venus being starting, or like uh, the Vault of Glass starting on Venus, you could actually use that as a spawn in point to get a fire team of six to go around Venus and have some fun as a group of six. That looks to like it's going to be the case with the Dreadnought as well. Um, it is filled with the most complicated teamwork-based puzzles Shit. I've seen. Right, it's like, uh, you know, you guys have all been there when you've kind of carried people through who were under leveled. At this point, with everybody being around the 290 gear level, I don't see that being an option because wow. the way the this will change right in probably a couple weeks. But right now, everybody needs to be contributing to that fight. Uh, just like some bosses, you need to just do DPS. Some bosses. Everybody's so spread out that they need to be able to survive and do their job, right? And it's there's more teamwork, there's more cooperation, uh, there's no, so many new mechanics, right? Stuff that we had to figure out on the fly, and it's just so much fun. You know, like sometimes you gotta do stuff in certain sequences. Sometimes you have to, you know, find your, just find your way around. <laughs> you know, like there's there's Mazes, there's jumping puzzles, there's every, there's so much to this. It, it's so much more expansive than anything we've seen before. It's, I don't know what like the real estate of it is, but I bet it's easily twice as the size of Vault of Glass. Wow. That Oryx fight though, man, I sure freaked out when I saw him. Like, he's a big yeah. dude. He's, he's a big dude. Ridiculous. That fight is insane. And he oh, don't go man. down easy. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so hard. It yeah. really does. You know, and even once you figure out the mechanics of that fight, you have to perfect your timing. Like you have to be on point. Once wow. now, see, once we're all like level three hundred, level three ten, <laughs> gonna be a little easier because you're gonna be doing so much DPS that the timing isn't gonna be so important. But right now, timing is everything in that, and everybody's got to be doing their job. And it, it took uh, Planet Destiny what thirteen hours? You it guys? was it was easily twelve and a half hours, easily. Wow. wow. Yeah, we started right when the well, we started about five minutes after the raid went live, and uh, we that was one p.m. Eastern time, and we ended up playing until about one thirty a.m. Wowzers. Yeah, and then we we got all our gear. We went to the tower. And we showed that shit off. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, I got some Crazy. awesome ones too. I got a new pulse rifle. The the new raid weapons are like made out of white, like bleached white bone, and then they have like pinkish, fleshy, Flesh, sewy yeah. material, like holding them together. They look crazy, so boss. Yeah, they yeah. are oh, so we, cool we, looking. We, we got to do this, Briar. All right, I'm going to get to yeah. 290. I, I'd definitely like to go. And hold my own, so at least I'll be strong enough. I got a badass weapon, and I'll be close to your level. Man, that sounds awesome! Twice oh, as big as the Vault of Glass. That's intimidating, though, man. It really is. It, it's wow. a it's a time commitment, you know. Like you and you you gotta you gotta expect that you're gonna fail, right? Of course. You're in there with a new fire team, and you only got three hours. You it's gotta rad. expect that you're gonna fail. You're not gonna make it, right? Mm -hmm. So you 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 know, if, if you only got three hours with your fire team. Then you might want to make a couple of appointments. <laughs> you know, like we'll do a little bit on Wednesday, a little bit on Thursday, a little bit on Friday, that kind of thing, because it's big and there's a lot of bosses. There's a lot of big encounters. Wow, man. Uh, and I gotta say, machine guns are mega useful. Bring it, like, rig up a machine gun. Bring it. Try and get boots that have extra machine gun ammo. Got you. 
because uh, their machine guns just so many times came in such handy because they just do so much like constant DPS. All right. Well, uh, post show we're gonna we're gonna iron it out and get together our little click. Yeah, maybe we'll live stream that. That'll be fun. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be a lot of fun, man. So Taken King, I'd, I'd say by all our opinions, has been a huge success. Yeah, uh, I, I don't have any complaints about it right now. I really don't. I mean, in the coming weeks, maybe the PvP, there's something going to be wrong with it. Shotguns are still overpowered in PvP, if you ask me. Yeah. Oh, and I was super mad. For one of the quests, they give out a shotgun that is a Fell Winters type shotgun. It's conspiracy a, theory. Yeah, the conspiracy yep. theory. Yep. It comes out fully leveled up at 300. 300 light level, you get it as strong. a reward. Yeah. It's it's a Fell Winters type shotgun, and it even has fucking rangefinder on it. I yep. saw it and I got mad. <laughs> I was like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> like everybody, not only did you make this thing available, but you gave it, it to, to everybody. fucking everybody. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that's that's a problem. But you know, hopefully they'll pull back on shotgun range again. We'll see. All right, so guys, are we done with the Taken King for now? You guys want to move on? Um, actually, actually, our first story has something to do with the Taken King. All right. All right, so uh, Destiny the Taken King is PlayStation's most downloaded day one game ever. Are you guys surprised to hear that? No, I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> That's a of big, big fucking deal, man. So the other thing, the important thing, too, is this is outpacing the original Destiny release on day one. Like, this is outpacing that, too. That, does, that makes crazy. sense, too. What, what Destiny did is it came out, it got... You know, 6.5, 7.5s, 8.5 reviews. So yeah. people said, well, I'm not buying that. But then people who did buy it said, look, this game is fun. Buy it so you can play it with me. And I think this game built momentum over time. And the Taken King just hit like a ton of bricks. You know, Bungie's been out there promoting this game. You yeah. know, like since E3, they've been constantly talking about this game. Uh, and... I think that they killed it with the Taken King. I really do. Yeah, I mean, uh, after a, an expansion like this, I don't think many people are going to, you know, even think twice about the next one. So, yeah. Um, it, it's that good. You know, it's right. one of those situations where you get a game, it's so good, so much content, everything works so seamlessly, everything feels so much more balanced. Whatever they're going to do next, you're like, yeah, give it to me, give it to me. So it's a win-win for Bungie. I think it's a win-win for us too, man. It's yeah. a win-win for gamers. This the Taken King is probably the best DLC I've ever seen as far as the amount of content you get, how good it feels, everything that's been balanced out. You know, all, all our old weapons are basically nebulous now. You throw those out, but all these new ones feel so fresh, and, and I'm enjoying it. Throw out right. all the PvE weapons. The PvP stuff will still be really good, though. Yeah. All that PvP guns, keep those. Those will still be just as good. All right. And so I'm having a hard time getting rid of old stuff. I'll be honest. Me too, bro. <laughs> My vault is fucking jam packed right now. Me too. I don't want to do it. I don't want to yeah. do it. It, it kind of burns to, to dismantle some stuff you've had for months and months and months that you don't want to get rid of. But continuing on, guys, Bloodborne, the Old Hunters DLC has been announced. Now, I don't know if you guys got a chance. I know, Robbie, you play Bloodborne. I absolutely love that game, and I'm really, really excited for DLC for it. My wife and I played it, beat it. Took about a week, but it was refreshing. It was very fun, very difficult. But it's one of those games where there's not a lot more to do after you beat it. And so DLC is very, very refreshing for me. It's a pretty long game, though, isn't it? Isn't it like 50 hours or something? I put 65 into it. Okay, That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I put 65 hours into it, and I loved every minute of it, man. It's one of those games that has that learning curve that if you don't stick with it for the first couple hours. You're gonna let it go, and you're gonna miss up. You're gonna pass up one of the best gaming experiences you have all year. You know, it's one of those type of situations where you run out and you get killed too many times, and you lose heart, and you're like, "Oh fuck this! I'm gonna go play Hello Kitty." You know, <laughs> but if, if you stick with it and you learn the little uh, dynamics of how you you interact with the enemies and strafing, moving forward and back, it makes a huge difference. Bloodborne is an awesome game. It's one of my favorite games of the year, honestly. Yeah. It, it's pretty good. It's, it really is pretty good. And so, uh, do we have uh, the release date for this expected DLC, uh, Robbie? November twenty fourth. That's what's what day is that? My birthday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, it is. a birthday present? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right, so uh, Star Wars Battlefront Collector's Edition will come with a Han Solo mini fridge. Holy shit! Really? This is the one with him like frozen in carbonite. Yeah, I know. What? It looks, it's pretty interesting. They just sold me a mini fridge. What? <laughs> I don't care about the game. I just want the mini fridge. <laughs> you don't care Seriously? about the game. What? It's got a. It, it holds a six pack, and okay. it really has Han Solo in carbonite on the front. Oh yep. man, damn. You want to bring up? Maybe we should bring up the image here. Wow. I'll open it. Oh man, that's too good. Show, yeah, somebody show that image. I want to see what it looks like. That's a, a pre-order bonus. I wouldn't want anything crappy. I think that Metal Gear Solid: The Phantom Pain had. It's not a pre-order bonus. It's a collector's edition. It's one hundred thirty dollars. Well, that's worth it. Collector's edition. <laughs> You know, I need, look at me, man. I need a, need a small fridge. Hey, I could use some cold drinks in my office. Go six and easy in here. during the show. Oh, no, cold. cans only. Damn it! <laughs> you don't sell canned water, man. <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. Let's let's have Beastly Thoughts canned water. Let's see. Beastly, you right, can you guys see that? About the next story. Can you guys see that fridge right there? Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's what it looks like. So, and then you open it up. I think you can hold, yeah, like six cans or something. So it's Han Solo in the Carbonite from Episode Five. Very interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Not for I, me. I, I have it's... to have that. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. That's something I I, I definitely need to have. Awesome. Hold on. I'm I'm trying to type in my credit card number right now. Hold on, Briar. <laughs> don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Yeah. So this news probably means more to me than it does you guys, but I'm sure a lot of you guys watching the show played The Last of Us. And so The Last of Us 2 was accidentally teased during a live stream from Naughty Dog. So okay. Naughty, Do Naughty Dog was uh, live streaming the Nathan Dr uh, Drake collection, and during their live stream, one of the writers for the game uh, mentioned that some of the assets from this game was being used in the first Last of Us. And then he stopped and said, oh, did I say the first Last of Us? And then he laughed and continued yeah. with the live stream. And so people like myself, you know, we pissed ourselves at that moment, uh, filled with joy and excitement of uh, Naughty Dog teasing that The Last of Us 2 is actually in the work. Now, a lot of people know by now that um, Nolan North teased this game, or at least leaked it, what, about two months ago, I would say, during a con that he was at. And he talked about some of the other games that he's working on with Naughty Dog, and he mentioned the next Last of Us. So it's definitely happening. I know a lot of people aren't that excited for the story to continue. Some people think that it's a self-contained story and it doesn't need anything else. I completely disagree. I want to see I disagree more of this. Too. I want to see more of this world. I want to see more survival stories. There's it's it's like any zombie world, like The Walking Dead. There's so many stories going on simultaneously that are worth being viewed and, and seen and experienced. And I think The Walking Dead is I mean, I'm sorry, I think The Last of Us is even better than The Walking Dead as far as the story and the world that they created. So I'm super excited about it. I can't wait for it. And uh, I'm sure you guys are excited for it, too. I don't think Naughty Dog would ever do a Last of Us 2 unless they knew they could properly do a sequel and make another, like, amazing story. Like, I'm sure they really want this game to be good because they know how much the first meant to so many people. And I, I wouldn't think they'd do a second one unless they knew they could follow it up and follow it up well. And I think The Last of Us 2 is pretty much guaranteed, and that makes me so happy because I think... Honestly, Last of Us was one of the best gaming experiences I've had in my life. Just playing the campaign, it changed a lot of things. Like, man, it was that, incredible. So, this it, makes me very happy it does. This yeah. is not a story, guys. I don't understand why you're getting so excited about this. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> well, it's, it's like, you know, they you take that Gallahorn and show them your ass. They leaked that there's going to be a Last of Us 2. Of course, there's going to be a Last of Us 2 as well. It's easy. Popular it. games <laughs> of the PlayStation 3. Yes, but... Like, there's no doubt that there's going to be a Last of Us 2. We don't know anything about it, though. Like, what are we talking about here? Of course, we're looking forward to seeing the Last of Us 2. It was one of the... Briar, used to ever on hating on Last of Us. Briar, Briar. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Look, I'm Stop. agreeing with you that check, it's a great check, game. Check and, it out. It's, but it's like, why are we talking about a, a, a accidental... Leak. We, we, we just I talked about you, it, like, two months ago. And I give you one no reason why we're talking about this game at all. We know nothing about this game at all. Nothing. What we yeah. need to know is what we know. The Naughty Dog's making it is going to be fucking awesome. We already do awesome. that. Check this out. <laughs> some games, just... some, some oh. games, hold on, Robbie, let, let me take the steering wheel here. 
some games that are amazing and they come out and they break records like Red Dead Redemption, people would say, of course they're getting a Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm sure people have been pining for that game since the game was released. We mm-hmm. still haven't seen anything, so it's good to get But some we already fun. got a leak that it was coming out. That's what I'm saying. We, but we already we, knew that this was coming out because there's been a lot of it's, 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 more, it's more meaningful when you get it directly from Naughty Dog than Nolan North. Okay. Nolan North, is a, he's the a voice multiplayer actor. beta for Star Wars <laughs> Battlefront will be open to everyone on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Awesome. That's good news. I love multiplayer betas because they basically tell me if I'm going to buy a game or not. Well, that and Star Wars mini phrases. Yeah, hold on. It'll tell you if this game's been broken or not. <laughs> so, we'll see. No, no, uh, excuse me. To to get uh, this beta, what do you need to do again? Uh, uh, read the article, oh, probably. <laughs> PS4, I think you can't fucking read the article, Briar, okay? So, uh, I'm guessing it has something to do with the uh, Uncharted, um, the Nathan Drake collection, which I really don't need because I have them all. So, huh, one of those situations, I guess. Maybe I'll have to spend a couple bucks to get that beta. So the good news here is that we're getting a multiplayer beta that's going to be available to PS4, Xbox One users, and PC users. So basically the whole, like everybody who's thinking about buying this game can go on, check it out, see if it's actually going to work, right? Normally these betas aren't actually betas. They come too close to the release of the game. What they really are is like a demo, like, hey, check out this game. We think you're going to like it. You get a chance to get your hands on it. You get to see if the... Uh, EA can actually run some servers that can support it, which I think is a big question in a lot of people's mind for this game. This is awesome, and it's good that they're doing it. It shows that they have a lot of confidence in it. I think it's a little too close to launch, to be honest. I would have preferred if they did it maybe two, three months before the game came out, like a couple months ago. Because the beta is supposed to be something you're supposed to take feedback from. Well, that's what I just said. It's not a beta. It's a demo, right? They call everything a beta now, but there's... There's nothing beta about it. This is a demo. You're right, Briar, and I agree with you, but at the same time, I'm just thinking of what beta means. Like, it means it's a state, like, it's an early build of the game which they can take feedback from and, like, make the game better. That's the point well, of a that's beta. What a beta not is. necessarily every developer does that. You're right. Yeah. Um, to release a real beta to the public, though, is a little risky, right? What they are doing here, this is what Destiny did. This is, oh, this is what a lot of companies are doing, right? They're releasing small portions of the game. They put beta on it to let you know that things can change between you know, now and the, no, no, time the game comes out. But what it essentially is is a demo, right? It's like it's a, it's a demo. Try this out. See if you like it. We think you will. Then yep. you can buy our game when it comes out. You know... Beta alphas, betas, those are things that get used internally for testing purposes. You don't release those to the public except in very rare circumstances. Yeah. It, it's it's more of a play on words. It's like PR speak that yeah. they're using to, to make the consumer think that we actually matter is what Briar Rabbit's saying. We do matter. We're the we're the last <laughs> word on whether this is going to be a success or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think they want us to feel like us playing the game is actually going to matter by sending them, sending them that feedback uh, and I think what you said is actually very, very true. That it's more of a demo than a beta, especially with these games that we've been getting lately. I'm thinking of Call of Duty, the Black Ops 3 beta. To me, that felt like a real cohesive piece of entertainment that didn't need much work or polish. Yeah. It's beta a demo just kind of got co-opted to kind of take demo. that. Like, demo is just kind of, I don't know, for some reason people don't like to use the word demo anymore. I don't know if it's got a negative connotation or something, but beta is like the new fresh term, you know, you're getting insider access, you know, exclusive access to the beta. They hype it up. Yeah, exactly. It hypes yeah. it up. But really, it's just a demo. Yeah. Alright, so Nintendo has filed a net patent for the a possible NX controller. And there's a picture. I will screen Show share it right now. That's what Nintendo's known for. Alright, so, this is it right here. No! So, at first glance... This definitely looks like the Wii U gamepad, but there are some differences because you can see right here there's only two buttons. It's got kind of a different layout, and these right here, this little shoulder, this is supposedly a scrollable button. Like, I don't know how you would use that, but from what I'm hearing, this is supposed to be using the index finger right here. These are scrollable, mm-hmm. which is very so interesting. Like a wheel? Yeah, like it's like a scrollable wheel, like almost mm-hmm. like a volume slider. But it's your mouth. Yeah, so I don't know. What do you guys think of this? Completely unexciting. Absolutely right. 
<laughs> I, I, I agree 100. percent I I want Nintendo to get their shit together, man. I mean, the Wii was a success because it was a gimmick. The Wii U tried to live off that gimmick and even modeled itself after the Wii. Got this big bulky controller, which some people like. I personally don't, couldn't care, you know, either way. But that seems too close to what the Wii U is. But I, I think I look at this from another angle too, and I see that it kind of looks like a smaller, slimmer gamepad. This almost makes me think of this is going to be the hybrid. Looks, this is going to be the thing you take on the road right here. Looks, this is going to be the controller, and that's why it's got the screen. Well, if that may that may work out. I mean, the 3DS is very square and flat, and it doesn't conform to the hand as well, so that may be a possibility. But if that's what they're, they're planning on us having in our living rooms, it does not look comfortable at all. looks like, you know... Yeah. It doesn't it look comfortable. It is just a pattern, though. To be fair, yeah. we don't... This is just something, like, in case they end up doing this controller, like, they, they, they have it. This is, that's the point of a pattern. And, and, so. and look at those thumbsticks, too. They look like the old uh, PSP thumbsticks. They're terrible. Oh, God, they are terrible. 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 It's terrible. It's terrible. It's PSP today, yeah. It's Most terrible uh, thumbsticks. And if Nintendo is listening somehow, please don't make it so that we can only play with that damn thing. Give us a regular controller to play with without having the, these big, giant, bulky controllers. We just want regular controllers. Look at PlayStation. Look at Xbox, please. There's a lot please. of skepticism about the NX, whether it's going to succeed or fail, and there's been a lot of rumors that say it's going to be as powerful as the new consoles or less, or it's going to be whatever. Like, there's so many different rumors. Who knows? I, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Just man. awkward silence again. All right, so the final little bit of news we got today is the Xbox One Elite controller is releasing the same day as Halo 5 Guardians on October 27th. So that's a good reason to have them both on the same day. Mm Yep. Damn. That controller, I'm going to have that controller. I've I've already bit the bullet. Something I need to have. I, I, I like these precision controllers. I don't have a scuff. Something that I wanted, and from from what I'm understanding from people who've tinkered with this controller, this is going to be the replacement uh, for the controllers like Scuff. So they'll definitely have competition now. I can say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Scuff's going to have to innovate again if they want to stay relevant on the Xbox side. On PlayStation side, I mean, they're still offering something you can't get. Yeah. From PlayStation, although there are plenty of other companies that make you know paddled controllers now. Yep. Uh, I I really like this controller. Like I. I really hope that PlayStation feels the need to respond to this because uh, just as just as much as I don't like the Xbox One original controller, uh, I'm really starting to hate on the PS4 controller. Ooh, <laughs> tell, me, tell, me, tell me, it's all it's hate. Not, it's not made well. It's not durable. It's not a you know they just they nailed it comfort wise, right? Ergonomically, I think it's one of the best controllers ever. I think. The 360 wired controller was a little bit better ergonomically, but I mean, it, it, that may be apples to oranges too. You know, like so close. Okay, they're both really good, but durability-wise, these things just don't last. They don't how last. Many, how many times have you thrown your controller? Where? I do not throw my controller. I'm not a rage gamer. Like, God, I, I, I'll be honest with you. Occasionally, one will, like drop. You know, I play on a, you know, a raised surface like a desk here. And occasionally one will like drop off, but I have multiple issues with multiple controllers, and it's like all over the place. Sometimes here I got a controller right here. Sometimes it's the right trigger just wears out, right? It just wears out. The thumbsticks, even with the new um, rubberized material, still I'm having issues all. with the thumbsticks, and even uh, the sensitivity. It just kind of. I don't know if this is a Bluetooth issue with the PlayStation itself, but sometimes, like, I'm looking in here, and all of a sudden it's like, Bleh! you know, like, the character just, like, goes crazy. Like That always happens with me only when I'm playing split screen, though. When I have a second player on, or, like, PS4, whatever game we're playing, like, someone's going to lag, like, crazy with their controls. Like, so it's I don't, terrible. I don't know if that's a Bluetooth thing or if it's a controller thing, but Sony really should fix that because it's ultra annoying. I, I uh, have the same situation. I'm stick clicking in button, you know, like that... Mm-hmm. I guess R3. It's called R3. That's gone on multiple controllers. Like I, these controllers, and the battery life sucks on these things. Yeah, like yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah. And they give you a three-foot cable. Yeah. They even give be... you a cable. Actually, I'm not even sure they give you a cable. 
No, uh, they don't. If you just buy it separately, I don't think. No, no. Do. Yeah, if you buy a controller by itself, no. But the PS4 does come with a very short case. Yeah. So I mean, I, I would like them to take a second pass at this thing. Definitely. I, I love the ergonomics of it, but I think it's it's really built shoddily. Yeah, I I, I gotta agree with you. I got a controller in there sitting on uh, my entertainment center right now that hasn't been touched in two or three months. I've already ordered all the buttons for it, just didn't feel like taking the shit apart and putting a new uh, shoulder button on it. It's just mm-hmm. sitting there because I play it, my it's PS4. Broken. Yeah, it's just sitting there. I got the buttons and everything. I did a video on how to do it. After I did the video, my next controller went out. I said, I'm, fuck it. I'm going to leave wow. it on the... That's exactly what happened. I mean, I got all the parts, I got everything, and all I do is watch my own video to remember how to do it. But I got a controller that it, it hasn't gone out. Nobody else plays my PS4, so just sitting in there. Yeah. So hopefully they, they, these they, are not cheap. They're sixty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. They were seventy when they first came out. Um, hopefully they 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 follow Microsoft's footsteps here and um, go the premium route. You know, I'd love to see a Sony premium PlayStation Four controller. Mm-hmm. You know, that feels like it's made of quality material that won't shatter and break. Those trigger buttons, man, I know a lot of people are having issues with that. You know, The Last of Us is what did it to me. Yeah, I know. It's, it's The Last of Us. Every time I play The Last of Us, it happened twice. I'm shooting an enemy, and all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. It just the spring just breaks. And um, hopefully Sony will learn something from that. But, yeah, man, Xbox One Elite Controller releasing the same day as Halo 5. I wonder if they planned that out, guys. I wonder if there will be a bundle. That'd be nice. Maybe like a ten dollar discount if you buy both at the same time. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, yep. I'm okay. definitely. I'm planning on buying both of those. So. Well, what if they give it to you for one ninety nine? That'd be awesome. That would. Oh. That, that would that would actually work. You know, you get. God, it, you know, when you when you get it up to that two hundred price point, all of a sudden I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sliding back a little bit here. <laughs> Oh man, two hundred dollars! Holy cow! Oh man, it's a drop in the bucket, Briar. Oh my god! Uh, maybe I want to buy those separately after all, <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't feel so painful. <laughs> now, uh, those, this is... those would make a great Christmas present, though, huh? Halo yeah. Five and uh, the Xbox One Elite controller to play it on. It'd be a happy Christmas morning. Are oh, you yeah. guys? Are you guys going to be looking forward to playing that at all? You think you're going to get into Halo it? Halo Five. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. All right, because I know my wife and I, you know, we've really been talking a lot about that, watching a lot of those videos. The, the trailers for it have gotten us super hyped. So um, I'm looking forward to playing that and getting back into my, my Halo verse, man. Yeah, I'm a big Halo fan from, like, right back with uh, Halo Combat Evolved. I, that game came out with the original Xbox, and I was blown away. Halo 2 was probably my most anticipated game of all time. Well, I yeah. wait for Halo 2. Halo changed... Halo changed the world, man. I mean, a lot of people don't see it that way, but they really did. They changed the gaming world. They, you know, they kind of perfected, I think, they, the current control, control scheme, scheme for, for first-person shooters. Like, everything has yeah. kind of been built off of that as far as absolutely. I'm Absolutely, absolutely. It looks like Bungie's doing the same thing again with Destiny, but in a different way, yeah, honestly. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, you're it, absolutely right. They're, they're revolutionizing the, the gaming world. Man. What a fucking legacy! The companies, they imagine that working there. You'd be like, damn, we're changing the world. That's awesome. Yeah, and you know when you when you do that kind of thing, you just you inspire more top talent to co- want to come to work at a company that does that stuff. Yeah. So you can just keep doing it. You know, like you look at like a company like Apple or Microsoft in the early days where they were just revolutioning the Microsoft was revolutionizing the world on like a five year plan. Like every five years, it's just like, kaboom! Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Everybody and had like, to every, you know everybody wanted to get in on that so they could just keep doing it because they just got they just kept getting more and more talented people in there, and then uh, you know it all went to shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it went to shit. <laughs> went to shit. Friar, so eloquent with his words, I swear it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's really shit. So I think that's about it, guys. Any any other news stories we want to talk about? Uh, mm-hmm. What about the comments section? Anybody got any questions or anything? A little late for that. <laughs> I've been looking through. Like, I'll go through and answer them after we, we end the live stream. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys about this video that I'm going to do. I don't know if you guys have, um, are fans of Jelly Belly uh, Jelly Beans, but they've got this uh, game. It's actually a box of Jelly Belly Jelly Beans that are good flavored and bad flavored. I know some of them are flavored like zombie, I mean, 
vomit. Some is like um, dog uh, food. Dog food. I was telling you about it when we were playing Destiny. Boogers. Uh, baby diapers, boogers, all kinds of crazy stuff. Skunk spray. And what you do is you spin the wheel, and the, the wheel will land on a color. You pick it up, and it's either going to be the good flavor or the bad flavor. And so my wife and I are going to play that after I get done with this stream. And uh, we're going to do it live and put it on the channel. Hopefully she gets all the terrible shit, and I get all the tasty morsels. Oh, it's funny, I'm not hoping that at all. Yeah, me neither. I'm not, I'm not hoping she gets all the good stuff. That's so best. weird that we have differing opinions on this. <laughs> okay, yeah. I can't it. God, I, mean, I thought we were on the same. You didn't get all the good stuff. Mm, no, <laughs> some of that stuff sounds terrible. I can't believe Jelly Belly would even make stuff like that. But you know, you want to eat a jelly bean made of boogers. Yeah, do man. It. Hey, man. I don't even want to talk about that shit. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't even get to that color. Oh my god. Do you swallow it if you realize you got the dog food or the baby diaper? If I mean, you, how do you love her, you'll swallow. Hey. Are you always <laughs> swallowing these two people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Brian, you're absolutely right. <laughs> hey, man, aren't we supposed to use that one? <laughs> I just thought of it on the spot. I never used, never said that before at all. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> Thank you all, all right, so guys, much I think for we watching. Wrap this one up. Robbie, you got oh, anything man. coming up this week? Lots of destiny. Lots of destiny. Yeah, I, I'm That's looking forward to actually yeah. starting some new characters. Yes, I gotta level up my characters as I haven't been playing them much. I did get the uh, exotic quest to Titan though to get the auto rifle Fabian strategy. I think it is, so I'm almost done with it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, those. That's actually a good gun. I've heard it's really good, and I really want to get it. Hold on, hold on, Robbie. Is that hair I see under your chin? Yeah, it is. Holy shit! Welcome Beard to Beard Clan. Beard confirmed. <laughs> Beard confirmed. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Beard, it's coming. Beard confirmed. Oh shit! Wait till oh, you guys see Robbie next week. <laughs> no, I'll probably be sure, to be honest. Wow. So. All right, guys, I'm going to end it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. See ya.